Hey guys, it's Dr. Armstrong at Forever Family Animal Hospital. Thank you for tuning in today. So today we're gonna to talk to you about uh, anesthesia machines. So a lot of times we hear about anesthesia. Anesthesia can be a variety of things. So sometimes we use injectable anesthesia to get them kind of under uh, initially. Sometimes we maintain them with injectables. That's called total intravenous anesthesia. And sometimes we use a gas inhalant in most cases to keep them under. So we're gonna talk about the different parts of the machine, how it works, and how we use it every day in the animal hospital. So first and foremost, we have to start with oxygen. So oxygen is super important. We wanna make sure all of our patients are getting tons and tons of oxygen while they are um, asleep uh, at safe levels. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on our oxygen um, tank here. Okay, so that just turned on. I have a little gauge over here that tells me where my oxygen PSI is at. So right now we're at about a thousand and that's good. If we get under 200, I like to swap out my tank to make sure that I have plenty of oxygen for my patients. So a thousand is great. So we're good to go with oxygen pressure. We're good to go with this tank. Um, some clinics will have really big tanks and hoses that will come to them. Some clinics will have um, house gas with lines that will drop down. Uh, and some clinics are actually carrying these really cool machines that make oxygen now as well. But we're just, you know, keeping it real on a budget. Um, so we are sticking with the little guys for now. So we have oxygen to our flow meter. So now this guy has different um, marks on it that tell us how much oxygen we're using. So when I turn my green dial, Lefty Lucy, the little ball comes up. Okay, and so this is how many liters of oxygen per minute that I'm gonna be administering to an animal. So two is kind of our go-to area. Sometimes we'll drop down to one and a half, sometimes one. Um, I pre-oxygenate all my patients before we go under anesthesia, and those guys are usually up here, just because I'm really trying to get your oxygen levels really good before we induce anesthesia. So this is called our flow meter. So righty tighty, lefty loosey. So it's all gonna start with the oxygen. So oxygen comes in, goes into the flow meter, comes out here. This is called a flush button. If I need to flush oxygen, here we turn that back on. You can hear how this gets a little loud. So that's gonna pulse oxygen through my circuit, okay? So this is my flush button. All right, I'm gonna turn that off and save it. <laughs> so we've got oxygen coming through here, coming through the flow meter. We're gonna follow this black hose and this comes over here to our vaporizer. So our vaporizer is really important. So this vaporizer holds sevofluorine. So there's different kinds of gas that we use. In veterinary medicine, we either use isofluorine, which comes with a purple label, or sevofluorine, which is the yellow label. And this is the type of inhalant that it is. So um, I'm just gonna step over here and grab the bottle so you can see kind of what that looks like. Okay. All right, so this is kind of what our bottle looks like. So this is what it comes in. It comes as a liquid, which is, you know, it sounds a little crazy, but it comes as a liquid and we pour it into our vaporizer chamber over here, okay? So we could actually, um, well, we're kind of full right now, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, but we have this little cap here, we pull that off, we unscrew this, we pour it into our chamber, and we look at our little levels down here. So this is near full. And so I don't need to put any more into my machine. But this tells me that we're good to go for a long surgery if need be. Okay, so SIVO flooring. So we have um, our SIVO in here. The oxygen's gonna come through and it's gonna pick up some SIVO. Now when I wanna turn this on, I just push this black button down and then turn the dial for how much I wanna give. How much we wanna give is very patient dependent. And it depends on how much pre-medication they had, how wound up they are, how nervous they are, how sick they are. So typically I like to start them around two to three, depending on how um, alert they are, how they handle their pre-meds, how sick they are, okay? So usually I can keep them between a half and three, all right? Sometimes we need to start a little higher to get them down, but typically they're gonna be in this range. We almost never go over this high, okay? So um, just a little bit of SIBO. Now the key with anesthesia, is to keep it balanced. So if I use pre-medication appropriately and we do low stress handling appropriately, then I can get away with using less inhalant, which is safer for my patient. 
So, um, so the oxygen is going to come through here. It's going to pick up some SIBO. It depends on how much SIBO it's picking up, depending on my dial. Okay. It's going to come over here to my outlet. All right. We're going to follow our outlet tube up here. So here we have our um, outlet tube. So the the SIBO and the oxygen are going to come out here through this tube, and they're going to go to my patient. Okay, so my patient's going to be intubated, and this is the end of the endotracheal tube, and it's going to go into my patient this way. All right, now the patient is going to inhale and exhale, and sometimes we even need to breathe for them. Now, if I need to breathe for them, sometimes I have to kind of close off the system so I can give the patient a breath. So if I want to do that, I have my pop-off valve all the way open because this is for safety. I never close this but I have like a permanent close button here. So I can push this and give the animal a breath with this back. Okay, so we have oxygen and SIBO going to my patient. They're gonna be inhaling, exhaling, they can come out through this line and it's gonna go into my soda sword container. So this, this has these little tiny granules in it and what these are gonna do is they're gonna absorb CO2. So when we exhale, we have CO2 coming out and we don't wanna keep rebreathing that because that can be really dangerous for us. And while we're under anesthesia, we like to monitor the CO2 levels on a capnograph. So these granules kind of help with the recirculation of the oxygen and the SIVO and the CO2, and they're gonna grab onto the CO2 so my patient doesn't keep rebreathing it. So really cool technology. All right, this bag will have some gas in it when we have everything on and running, and that helps me give breaths to my patient. It gives my patient the ability to have a nice intake breath. Um, and if I do need to give them a breath, again, I'm just gonna push this button to kind of temporarily close the system, and give my patient a breath. Now, the cool part is when we give our patient a breath, we also have this thing to monitor here. So this is how much pressure I'm pushing into a patient's lung. I pretty much never want to go above 12, so we really monitor that when we are breathing for a patient, okay? So that kind of covers those items. And then the last item I would like to cover would be our F air canister. So we have up here to our pop-off valve, our closing system, and then there's a blue tube that kind of comes off the back. So this blue tube comes off the back of this and it goes down here to these F air canisters. And what these do is they basically take the SIBO fluorine that could be recirculating in the system and they pull it out so that everybody else in the room isn't also breathing SIBO fluorine. So these are pretty cool canisters. Again, some clinics have really cool vac systems and things like that, but those get a little pricey. So baller on a budget is using some uh, F air canisters for now. So this is kind of our anesthesia machine uh, all together. We've talked about the oxygen, how it goes into the vaporizer, picks up the anesthesia, delivers it to my patient, and how we make sure that the air is clean when they're exhaling and that no one else is getting exposed to the SIBO fluorine too. So this is our machine. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. You can reach us at askthevet.ffah at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Please like and subscribe our videos. Please share them. I really want to share my knowledge and education with all of you, and I love that you're tuning in today. Thank you.